substitution reaction is a reaction in which one of a molecule's groups is substituted for another. Unlike addition reactions, which add groups, and elimination reactions, which remove groups, substitution reactions replace groups. SN1 reactions are the first type of substitution reaction we can discuss. They are two-step reactions. First, a leaving group leaves the substrate, taking its electrons and forming a carbocation. When we refer to the substrate, by the way, we are talking about the molecule that will be receiving the substitution. It's also the electrophile, since this carbocation will crave electrons. After the leaving group departs, a nucleophile enters. The nucleophile is nucleus-loving. It loves the positively charged nucleus, which makes sense considering the fact that it's negative. Consequently, it attacks the carbocation, drawing it in with its electrons, thereby forming a bond. So SN1 reactions occur in two discrete steps. The first step, the departure of the leaving group, is the slow step, and as we may recall from general chemistry, that makes it the rate-limiting step. The rate of the overall reaction will be completely independent of the second step, in which the nucleophile comes in. In other words, the rate is solely dependent upon the concentration of substrate. The rate is independent of the second step's nucleophile concentration. This is actually where the 1 in SN1 comes from. It indicates that the rate law is dependent on only one concentration. Since SN1 reactions occur in two discrete steps, there is a brief period of time during which the carbocation is sitting there, waiting for the attack of the nucleophile. The nucleophile can attack the carbon from either direction. If the final product is chiral at that carbon, we will find that both enantiomers form, since the nucleophile was able to enter from both sides. When this nucleophile happens to attack from this side, we get the R enantiomer but it could just as easily attack from the other side, giving us the S configuration. We get both the R and S configurations. Also, since SN1 reactions do have a carbocation intermediate, we should look for the possibility of rearrangement. In this scenario, there won't be any rearrangement because the carbocation cannot be relocated to a more stable position. Now, from this intermediate state, we may instead observe an E1 reaction. Suppose that our nucleophile comes in towards our carbocation, but instead of acting like a nucleophile and attacking the positive carbon, it acts as a base, and takes a proton off a neighboring carbon. As in a few reactions we've seen previously, this would allow the electrons to collapse down into a double bond. E1 reactions are similar to SN1 reactions, in that they are two-step reactions. And as with SN1 reactions, the first step of an E1 reaction is the departure of the leaving group, 
and that step will be the slow, rate-determining step, meaning that the rate of an E1 reaction depends solely upon substrate concentration, 